What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out five secrets you missed from WWE Bad Blood 2024. Loved Bad Blood this past weekend, had a great time watching it with you guys on live stream. Shout out to homie Dub, Trill Billy, and Sir Dance a lot, man. We had a great time, it was a fun PLE. So, we're gonna check out some of these secrets that we may have missed, man. Appreciate all love and support y'all shown on the channel. We're gonna get right into this video, man. Secrets you missed from WWE by Blood 2024. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists and also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Number 5. The real finish to Liv Morgan vs Rhea Ripley okay. One of the most criticized matches of the calendar year is without a doubt Liv Morgan vs Rhea Ripley from Bad Blood 2024. The match was all over the place and the match finish made WWE and their talent look like complete amateurs as it was completely botched and left fans in total bewilderment. As things stand, the match has a 3.39 rating on Cage Match, which makes it one of the lowest rated matches of the Triple H era, and this rating is unlikely to improve as a match has little rewatch value. To highlight just how atrocious this match truly is, CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre, also from Bad Blood, achieved a rating of 9.38. Since the botch finish went down, there has been rampant speculation surrounding what the match finish was actually supposed to be. It's Some very fans confusing. Have theorized that Morgan was supposed to pin Ripley, and that's why the returning Raquel Rodriguez placed Morgan on top of Ripley. Yeah. According to Five Bull Select, the original plan for the bout was indeed Morgan winning with assistance. However, things went into disarray when the referee called for the bell. It was implied that the original finish to Rhea vs Liv was Liv winning with Raquel's help. However, the referee couldn't justify not doing a DQ finish as he saw everything unfold. Mm -hmm. Whilst this finish would have been a vast improvement, it still would have led to criticism, especially due to the involvement of Rodriguez. Fans could literally hear a pin drop in the arena when she returned, and if the original finish went ahead, then they wouldn't have likely influenced the reaction towards her. The I mean... I, I, I think a lot of us speculated that Raquel would be coming back to assist her, and I, I kind of figured that, I mean, that seemed like that was supposed to be the ending where the referee didn't see it, and Raquel attacked Rhea, and then Raquel dragged Rhea on top of Liv, and then the ref... Uh, well, no, uh, Raquel would drag Liv on top of Rhea, and the, uh, the ref would count the one, two, three victory, but he wouldn't have seen... Raquel's interference now would the crowd have popped a little bit more I don't know possibly but that's what it seemed like it was supposed to happen but once the ref saw her he had to call a DQ because it was like well I see you now you're attacking her I don't know man that it was that was some weird placement somebody was out of place whether it was the ref whether it was Raquel who knows someone was definitely out of place because it, it didn't seem like it was supposed to finish that way match and the finish were so overwhelmingly hated by fans that there was immediate calls for WWE to bring the feud to an end and there appears to be no interest from fans to seeing the two wrestle at WrestleMania 41 next year. Even Ripley herself is pushing for WWE to go in an alternative direction as Ripley during Bad Blood Weekend was stating that she doesn't want to face Morgan at WrestleMania 41. Instead, she wants an epic showdown with either Io Sky or Bianca Belair. Which I think we can all agree with. <laughs> I am all for that. Did, she should not be holding the title to 41, bro. I'm, and I, I think Liv's doing some of her best work, but no, it. They shouldn't be the 41. That's, that's all I'm going to say. That's a little bit too long of a title reign. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do that because now she has this big muscle in Raquel helping her. But we'll see. I just, I don't think she should be holding the title that long. So, we'll see. Number four, the original two. One of the key themes of Bad Blood 2024 was acknowledging the past and the history of Bad Blood as a premium live event was discussed numerous times at an event showcase in the opening video package. With the original Bad Blood pay-per-view taking place way back in 1997, this meant that the majority of the wrestlers on the match card have since retired. However, two names who appeared on the inaugural pay-per-view did actually make an appearance on the 2024 broadcast. The first name to do so was Triple H. In 1997, Triple H would come to the ring with Shawn Michaels for the main event of the show, and Triple H would have a segment at the 2024 Bad Blood event. In fact, it goes even deeper than this as Triple H has appeared on every single Bad Blood PLE in history. That's crazy. The first being at 97, then in 2003 he had a Hell in a Cell match with Kevin Nash, then in 2004 he defeated uh -huh. Shawn Michaels in a Hell in a Cell match, and then Great of course match. he made the announcement of the Crown Jewel belt. 
The other name to achieve this was The Rock. In 1997, he competed in the opening contest as he teamed with the Nation of Domination to defeat the Legion of Doom. Fast forward to 2024, and the final boss appeared as a surprise to bring the PLE to a definitive close. And that's crazy when you think about it all these years later, and some of our favorites now that we grew up watching are actually, <laughs> when you think about it, they're actually running WWE. That's mind-blowing when you really think about it, man. Whilst Triple H and The Rock were the only two names to appear on both shows, WWE did have other options. Names such as Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and The Godfather all work for the WWE or have Legends deals, so they could have potentially gone all out in honoring the inaugural Bad Blood event. Number 3. Did WWE Spoil Jimmy Uso's Return? During the CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre Hell in a Cell match, fans noticed that there was a monitor under the ring, and this instantly led to speculation oh. that a wrestler was returning to the WWE. I didn't even peep that. I wasn't even really paying attention to that. So shout out to the fans with the eagle eyes that saw that, which that makes sense. If a wrestler is supposed to return or whatnot, they're going to have a monitor under the ring so they, they know their cue when to come out. That's crazy. I never even saw that. So that that's that's cool. I wouldn't have guessed it. I wasn't paying attention to it or looking that hard at it. So WWE during the show, fans believe that the monitor was for the returning Jimmy Uso who returned during the main event matchup. Wrestlers who are set to make returns or guest appearances can sometimes hide under the ring during the show and the monitor allows them to watch the show and know when to come out to perform their scripted spot. It is indeed possible that Jimmy was under the ring for the majority of the show. However, it's possible that he was snuck in just before the main event started. If Jimmy was there from the beginning of the show, this would have meant that he would have been under there for over three hours. However, if he was snuck in just before the main event, then he would have had around 20 minutes to get ready for his- I, I'd be surprised if they had this nigga under the ring for three hours. That's a long time to be laying down. Plan return. Number two, what did Roman Reigns say to Jimmy Uso? A Jimmy Uso's return at Bad Blood was handled to perfection. Jimmy Beautifully received a handled. huge reaction and the aftermath certainly helps further the Bloodline vs Bloodline story arc. When Roman Reigns got the win for his team at Bad Blood, he and Jimmy would embark on an emotional conversation. However, it was virtually impossible to make out what the two were saying to each other. Thankfully, the WWE were quick to publish a transcript and this is exactly what the two would say to each other. Reigns said, you did that, you did that. Jimmy said, oh yeah, baby. Reigns then said, you call the play? Jimmy then said, only for you, Oos. For you, my Oos. WWE ah, providing the transcript for the conversation was that's a very tough. welcome move, as it certainly expands the lore between Reigns and Jimmy Uso. Reigns was in total shock that Jimmy was the one who saved him, and of course, it was implied that Jimmy was waiting to insert himself into Reigns' life and save him from the Bloodline 2.0. Yeah, I like that. You called the play. That that That's tough. Just... It's a callback. It's a callback to, to, just seeing that. It's a you called to play. It's a callback to Jimmy always having that quarterback type uh, analogies that he would have. Like, let me call to play. Ooze. He finally called to play, and it, it worked out to perfection. That I, I like that subtle callback there. That's cool. Fans, the law between Reigns and Jimmy Uso. Reigns was in total shock that Jimmy was the one who saved this is him. Cool. And of course. It was implied that Jimmy was waiting to insert himself into Reigns' life and save him from the Bloodline 2.0. Jimmy is firmly cemented as a babyface on the main roster now, as following the match, it was him who actively encouraged Reigns uh -huh. to stick to his word and assist WWE Champion Cody Rhodes. It's unknown how reigning Intercontinental Champion Jey Uso fits into the mix. Jay has reacted via Instagram with a shocked emoji to Jimmy's return, and it seems like only a matter of time before Jay enters the fold once again. Yeah. The Bloodline vs. Bloodline match is still rumored for Survivor Series War Games next month, however some fans believe that too much has happened in little time for the match to take place. Whilst the wheels are indeed in motion for the epic collision, Jay is cemented as one of the faces of Raw and is currently a singles champion, and former Bloodline member Sami Zayn seems completely distant from the story arc. However, if WWE are smart, they could still pull it off effectively, but they must act with a degree of caution. As if the angle comes across as rushed or forced, then it may mm -hmm. damage the reputation of the feud heading into the War Games match next month. Now, there is speculation that they may hold off on the Bloodline Civil War for Survivor Series and instead have a Team Reigns vs Bloodline 2.0 matchup. Fans were fantasy booking over this on X all last month and Team Reigns was looking to feature names such as Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton. 
And with that being said, with Kevin Owens now officially turning on Cody Rhodes, it looks like Rhodes versus Owens 2 is, is the direction for Survivor Series. And this yeah. opens the door for WWE to get back on track with the Bloodline versus Bloodline saga. Yeah, but Cody doesn't need to be involved in it no more until The Rock comes back. So it looks like they are going with that uh, Cody versus Kevin Owens match. And now Kevin Owens is going to do everything to end Cody. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen on SmackDown this week. And number one, what did The Rock really mean? When The Rock made his dramatic return at Bad Blood, one of the main talking points centered around his hand gesture. As the final boss stood on the stage, he counted a three before delivering a throat cut gesture. The obvious meaning behind the signal is that The Rock was letting the three men in the ring, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, and Timmy Uso know that they had personally upset him and there was no turning back. Mm -hmm. In fact, WWE analyst Sam Roberts had a great explanation of this on his podcast this past weekend. I said to you immediately, I went, oh my god, Megan, how many people are in the ring? And Megan, tell me how many people were in the ring. Three. I said, Megan, The Rock is sending a message to all three of them. Which I, I think that's figured. how I perceived that. The Rock was letting Jimmy, Roman, and Cody all know that they've just entered into the sights of the final boss. Uh -huh. One question that WWE fans still have is why now? Why has the final boss waited until Bad Blood to reinsert himself into the mix? Well, from a kayfabe point of view, it looks like Reigns and Rhodes teaming up and being on the same side was a final straw for the Great One, yep. and there's no way he was going to allow this to happen. During his iconic post Bad Blood promo on Instagram, The Rock discussed a range of topics, and after making a dig at Rhodes, the final boss didn't give much away, but he did once again deliver a throat slash when mentioning the three aforementioned mm -hmm. names. There ain't nothing and The Rock, the final boss means there ain't nothing that will ever compare to The Rock going out there, the final boss and his music hitting and seeing those three in the middle of that ring. You had Jimmy, you had Roman, and you had Cody. The Rock doesn't have to say a thing. Tonight, we're gonna have a good time. Another mm -hmm. development in the story of The Rock returning is Solo Sokoa. As Sokoa and the Bloodline were escaping through the crowd, Sokoa stated that that was all a part of the plan, heavily implying that The Rock is pulling the strings. This storyline is going to take several twists and turns and hopefully the WWE delivers the goods as they could have a legendary storyline on their hands. But there you have it folks, five secrets- Hey man. Hey. That makes sense. He came out there, he gave the throat slash. It was- it was implied. That he's upset. He's made it very clear just with that. Looking at them in the ring. He's upset. And it makes sense. Because Roman once again. Not even once again. Roman helped Cody go against his family. Then he helped him again after the match. And this is the same guy that lost the title. That was supposed to be held from his fan for his family from a storyline perspective the rock would be mad and it kind of makes sense if the rock sent solo to get the title back from cody pointed him as the new tribal chief because once again roman did say he would be the next in line and to have roman help him in the end hell he helped him he helped Cody retain at SummerSlam. Like, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense why The Rock would be upset. Comment down below. Let me know if some of these uh, situations and, and uh, story angles and stuff like that was a surprise to you. I think the most surprising thing for me was the... the I didn't realize the screen was under the ring um, for the uh, Hell in a Cell match. So Jimmy could have been there the entire time. Or, you know, it's just giving you that prelude that someone's going to make a return. Most likely, Jimmy, he's going to be under the ring. So, I, I really didn't know that. I thought that was pretty dope. But I appreciate all the love support y'all showing on channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See you next one. Peace.